Daryl is here, and Joe's behind me with a big camera, and that's Senator Vince Lindsay sitting across the desk here, and we're talking about his wish to be the auditor of accounts. So, so it sounds like you see the auditor uh, office as sort of a hybrid of sorts, uh, to be quasi-legislative, quasi-mathematical, uh, and, and economic in that way. What skills do you think you bring, in it, aside from your obvious experience in the legislature, right. but what, what particular skills in the office do you bring? Well, well for example, uh, lately, in the last year or two, there's been a lot of discussion about fraud. Mm -hmm. uh, programs uh, being uh, <coughs> uh, taken advantage of, uh, departments and towns being taken advantage of. I also happen to be the Essex County State's Attorney, mm -hmm. much like the Wyndham County State's Attorney, except in my part of the state because it's rural, it's a part-time position. Mm -hmm. And so I've worked very closely with the law enforcement community and really know what communities and law enforcement agencies need by way of support in making those the necessary, uh, responding to complaints, conducting investigations. You know, most police officers, the worst kind of call they want to take is someone being accused or an allegation of fraud because they're not equipped to do it. One of the things I've talked about is forming a, a unit uh, or at least obtaining an, expended, uh, an appropriation from the legislature whereby if a town calls the auditor's office and says, look, we, we're a very small town, we have one person, there's no oversight, we think there's been embezzlement where the auditor could say, okay, we're going to contract with a <coughs> CPA firm. Uh, and, and go in and uh, look at the allegation and then give a report to the police, to the select board. And, uh, and then they can decide how and if, if and how to proceed uh, with that information. Would a, would a Vince Aluzzi office, uh, an auditor's office, um, emphasize more on the fraud piece uh, and make yourself available that way and, and encourage investigations that way? Or is it just, you know, status quo? It's not encouraging. It's not status quo. It's having a body of expertise available to municipalities. You right. know, you go to a select board in most Vermont communities, <coughs> and, you know, the select board has no staff. The town sure. is uh, has no staff to speak of, and they don't know really where to turn. They call the police. The police say, well, look, we have to do a forensic audit. We haven't got the money to do it. Interesting. And, wow. and, and it's really, a, it's always a, a, a struggle back and forth between the police agency that's contacted the town which says, hey, look, we pay you money, we want you to conduct this investigation, and the right. response from the police agency is, we're not trained to do those, and we haven't got $10,000 to spend on it, you do it. And I've seen this actually play out in my area. Yeah. And so I'm trying to come up with something to address that, you know, the performance audits I talked about, of course, doing the fiscal audits, it's all really a comprehensive uh, approach that I would take if elected and uh, hope that uh, it fills the void and maybe makes Vermont a more efficient uh, state and local uh, government. One of the things that, um, and I'm going to tie this into my conversation with Bill Sorrell and T.J. Donovan for that matter, but uh, Bill Sorrell touts uh, as one of his strengths as Attorney General the ability to, to sort of self-finance his office by saving money for the state of Vermont, gaining money for the state of Vermont. From your point of view, and if you wouldn't mind us explaining operationally, how do you think you help to enrich the coffers of the state, in addition to obviously keeping fraud and, and other forms of waste down? Well, it's uh, it, 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 when you drive down the road in your vehicle and you see a police car on the side of the road, you tend to slow down. Mm -hmm. Deterrence. And if we set up a program and a system of checks whereby Anyone who touches a state or municipal tax dollar knows that mm. their action may be the subject of an audit. I think you'll see a lot more efficiency. And it's not always, you know, fraud is usually 1%. It's, it's really the inefficiency. It's spending money without Agreed. really thinking about the, uh, you wouldn't spend your own money that way. Why are you You're spending right. the taxpayer's money that way? And I think that's what I'm trying to set up. You know, I issued a release a couple of weeks ago about an automated payroll system whereby the auditor or a department manager or a commissioner or the secretary of administration can simply log in and take a look at overtime issues. You know, are folks uh, putting in more than they should? And if well, we had that recently with state troops. That's exactly right. And again, that's not the biggest uh, problem I see from uh, a state physical fiscal overview about how our money may maybe is not spent as it should be. But clearly, uh, payroll is a major expenditure of state government. Yeah. And, and so those are the kinds of systems that I'd like to put in place. Take advantage of our, of our, uh, of our revolution and new technology and put it yeah. to work for the state. And that way you don't have to hire 
more people to watch other people to deter that conduct. It's rather having software and systems in place that accomplish that same objective where one person can simply spot check and folks know that you're doing that. Mm -hmm. That solves, in most cases, the problem just as a police car sitting on the side of the road slows down traffic and brings about more responsible sure. behavior behind the wheel. I think somewhere embedded in all of this, on a looser sense, uh, Vermonters, and again, generalizing here, it's not everybody, but there is a sense that a Vermonter or a New Englander in many ways has a frugality, a pragmatism, uh, and, a, and a dedication to a degree of efficiency, you know, like heating your home and, and doing all that. So this, this is part of our ethos, I think, mm -hmm. in, in the state of Vermont. Um, talk about that a little bit from the auditor's position and, and you as a character and how you reflect that. Well, my parents uh, both uh, immigrated to this country from Italy. They were born and grew up in the uh, Depression. Mm -hmm. My parents were born in 1920. My father's 92 years old and oh, still man. lives in Barrie. And uh, very frugal. And I think it's the upbringing that they lived through. They had really nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, he immigrated to this country when he was 16 years old. He worked as a granite sculptor in Barrie. Wow. And uh, I tend to carry those values uh, forward when you've got parents who really worry about where the next uh, uh, paycheck is going to come from, and it wasn't quite that bad, but that's what they grew up with, and often, oftentimes the manner in which you grow up does govern <coughs> your life uh, style. And not an uncommon event right now, people are living the same thing, depression right. era stuff. So, um, I, you know, those, those values are instilled in me. Then representing the Northeast Kingdom for the last 32 years, as I said, high unemployment, low per capita income. Folks up there mm -hmm. don't have a lot of uh, money to spend on luxuries. It's really Sure. figuring out how you're going to make it to the next week. And I've governed myself in General Assembly in that same fashion. I don't think anybody would identify me as a big spender up there. Uh, clearly, I've uh, prioritized uh, areas where people who cannot help themselves need help, you know, homeless shelters and yep. uh, making yeah. sure people in Vermont don't increase to death, as we've had some examples of. Oh, yeah. So I've clearly focused on those areas, but we've tried to be responsible in, in how we've uh, appropriated those dollars, and I think... Uh, I think, by and large, the entire Senate Appropriations Committee has acted and been governed by that principle. So let me ask you this, and I think this is more a theoretical question. I get a sense of your character, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I, but I want to ask you. You're deeply involved in the legislature. You're deeply involved and well-connected, and you know a lot of people and, and have had you know, well-fostered relationships with them. Now you're asking to be the umpire. You know, you're asking to be the referee of sorts, uh, to you know, call them as you see them, that kind of thing. Talk about how you remain objective despite having relationships with all the people you work with over the years. Well, you're independently elected. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one of the comments I heard uh, Randy Brock make at one time was that there were five statewide office holders. The job of the auditor is to keep the other four honest. And I'm not <laughs> sure if that's exactly accurate. But nonetheless, it suggests that you're the watchdog for the other four agencies. And I find that having a good working relationship with legislators and those in the administration fosters uh, a better outcome because you have the cooperation of those two branches of government mm -hmm. and what you do is you uh, you say look we've got a paving program in Vermont that last year spent 500 million dollars uh, we've seen some uh, uh, some red flags in some areas where perhaps the expenditure did not meet expectations or was higher than anticipated. All too common. And, and, and let's go and look at that. I think mm -hmm. that's how you work. But being independently elected, you know, if I come down to Brattleboro and I hear that, uh, that uh, some uh, local program isn't functioning as intended, for example, the folks on Flat Street, very mm -hmm. frustrated that 60 days after Hurricane Irene, they, no state officials were in sight, gone. Yeah. Left holding the bag, if you will. Yeah. And, um, I th and, and, and given the tens of millions of dollars that Vermont has received, I would be uh, without question asking administration officials, where did the money go and why didn't it get to some of the hurricane victims or tropical storm victims? But you don't have the ability to shape policy per se. You have, you're in after the after the event sort of assessment rather than saying, here's where I think it ought to go, you know, to be clear. Well, what you do is you put the spotlight on an inefficiency or a, a, or, or a problem, and that oftentimes leads to a solution. True. Especially. So let's talk about this Republican thing. Now, up in the Northeast Kingdom, you're going to have a lot of conservative voters, I think it's safe assumption. And, I want to, and we, you talked a little bit about it before, but you're, you're talking to Wyndham County, you're talking to a pretty progressive audience here um, who, and for many of us, have not by design necessarily, but have never voted Republican. So 
Go ahead, elevator pitch. How come you're the guy? <laughs> well, first, uh, uh, you, can, you can judge someone by their friends. I, I've had a great working relationship with Jeanette White, Peter Galbraith, Peter Shumlin, and uh, many of the legislators, including, of course, Daryl Pillsbury, mm -hmm. which suggests that when we're in Montpelier, uh, party labels really are just that, and that we really focus on common sense solutions and uh, trying to move the ball ahead in a way that Vermonters generally support. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, 26 years old, I was uh, recruited by the Orleans County Republican Committee to run. Uh, a longtime senator was retiring. He was chairman of the Appropriations Committee. Oh boy. And they, uh, they embraced me and they said, look, Bron, and uh, you know, 32 years later today, here I am uh, as a Republican, but I've had some wide berth in, uh, in, in how I've <clears throat> been able to, to vote and the issues on which I advocate and I have found myself working very closely with uh, many Democrats, uh, which is reflected in the fact that many of them are supporting my campaign for state auditor. Yeah, it's pretty noticeable. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, and and I, I would say uh, it, it's a uh, you know historic you know Vermont is what it is today because of many of the leaders that we had over the last hundred years, mm -hmm. dating back to Franklin Billings and Woodstock. Uh, George Aiken in the 1930s and then of course through the 70s when he served in the U.S. Senate. Uh, Bob Stafford, the Stafford Loans, Jim Jeffords, those guys were all Republicans. They, like myself, were recruited by a party which really dominated Vermont politics at that time, but transcended the 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 ideological label that is associated with that party at the present time. Very frankly, I think many of the folks in Washington who call themselves uh, Republicans are ideologues and knuckleheads, and I have really nothing to do with those I'd guys. I'd never say that myself. Well, uh, I, 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 I read and, and see some of the things they do, and it's just uh, embarrassing. That's what I mean. It's, it's difficult. It's I say it, I'm off about it all the time. It's like, if you can align with the Repo Re National Republican Party, you know, I don't. I doubt your judgment. It's my sense, and this is why I, you know. But really, but I hear and I get your on a practical level. Right. Northeast Kingdom, if you're running as a Democrat, you're not likely to, right. to serve. Well, um, I think the kingdom has changed over the last uh, third of a century that I've been there. I think yeah. people there are more independent now than they were, you know, 32 years ago. Right. So I, I'm not sure that uh, there are there are Democrats elected from my part of the state. Uh, by and large, it's uh, it, it become a, uh, a, fo a focus on the individual as opposed to the letter after your name, which is it was, which is Vermonty too. Right, you know, and so. and so as folks uh, think back about Vermont and why they're here and why they like the state, they really have to give some credit to guys like Aiken and Gibson and Billings and Jeffords and Stafford, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I align with that group of individuals. In fact, Lola Aiken is my honorary campaign chairman. Nice. Uh, we both <laughs> nice. grew up in Montpelier and uh, yeah. she has known me since I was a kid yeah. and uh, always uh, told me, you know, she kept telling, she, when I was, you know, in the younger years she would always tell me about how George Aiken used to have uh, breakfast from time to time with Mike Mansfield who was the oh, Senate sure. Democratic leader at the time. And George Aiken's mm -hmm. success in Congress was his ability to work with Democrats, much like I worked with Daryl Pillsbury when he was there, and Peter Shumlin, and now work with Jeanette White and, and, and Peter yeah. Galbraith, and uh, would uh, envision a close working relationship on, on that same level if elected state auditor. Fair enough. In studio this noon, as our guest is Vermont State Senator Vincent Luzzi. He is a candidate for the office of Vermont State Auditor. He's in the middle of a day-long trip through Brattleboro. Senator, good to see you. Well, thank you very much, Tim. In fact, uh, over the past couple of years, I almost had the feeling that you had made Brattleboro your secondary zip code. Well, sometimes they refer to me as the third senator from uh, Wyndham County, and I uh, wear that with honor, and certainly have enjoyed working with uh, Senator Galbraith and Senator Jeanette White. Uh, in fact, uh, Peter Galbraith's on my committee, and We've spent a lot of time down here over the last couple of years trying to address economic development issues for the uh, region. So why do you want to make a change, especially after what uh, people would say is a rather impressive legislative career? I just thought after 32 years, a third of a century, more than half my life, it was time to try to put that experience that I've acquired, the relationships I've developed, uh, and, and put them to work from a different venue. I know how the legislature works. I've 
served on appropriations. I know what the expectations are of our funding. And now I'd like to look at it from a different perspective to see if that money that we've appropriated, the programs we've created, really are functioning as intended and as efficiently as possible. Is that the role of the Vermont State Auditor, just to uh, not only make sure that the uh, books are balanced as they say they are, but to actually look at some of these different programs? That's right. There's really two functions to the office. One is to ensure that the necessary audits required by law and very frankly by Wall Street, which rates our debt, uh, are done in a timely fashion that ensures that the, uh, the bond rating for the state will be high, assuming things are in order. The other aspect of the office is to undertake performance audits, where you really look at how a program is created and funded and see if it has uh, achieved its objectives or if there are areas of improvement whereby an audit can make those recommendations either to the administration or to the General Assembly or very frankly to the individuals who are running that program. Now what would make you qualified to be able to say, look, I can do this I, and here's why? Well, uh, the, the, as a member of the Senate Appropriations Committee, uh, I've actually overseen the office of the auditor. Uh, I'm also the Essex County State's Attorney, so I have a law enforcement prosecution background. And really, it's the 32 years of relationships that I've developed around the state that enabled me first to identify what programs should be uh, the subject of a performance audit, and to then use that experience both on, on the side of the ledger, which talks about why the program was initially created, how it's funded, and then apply that training experience, hands-on uh, approach to government, and look at those programs and say, look, we can do better and here's how. So are there programs that, in effect, pop out to you and say, I'd like to take a closer look at this one? Well, there's some areas, you know, there's been recent, there's obviously that we've had what appears to be a, 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 an epidemic of fraud, both in municipal government, electric utilities, uh, and I'd like to make sure that there is some resource available in state government to work with law enforcement agencies to lend a helping hand. One of the worst complaints a police officer wants to take is an embezzlement case because they are not trained in that area. One of the things I've talked about is perhaps forming a fraud unit which would be available to select boards and police agencies to assist in conducting those forensic audits so a decision can be made, yes, the money was misappropriated or really it was sloppy bookkeeping and innuendo and rumor that combined to, to lead to the complaint in the first place. So that's one aspect of it. But the other aspect really is how do you make state government work more efficiently? And one of the ways you do that is by ensuring that every tax dollar spent at the state or municipal level is spent in the most efficient way and certainly consistent with legislative intent. And that's where I think I can really bring my experience as a state senator, as a state's attorney, uh, to bear to ensure that that task is accomplished in a comprehensive way. There have been two types of state auditors and certainly several other officers like this, either one that stays there and does the job over a long term, and one that would be using this as a stepping stone to higher elective office. Which do you see yourself as? Well, I've been in the Senate for 32 years, so no one can suggest that I use positions as stepping stones. <laughs> uh, I've uh, enjoyed the Senate, uh, but at you know, after a th almost a third of a century, I just thought it would be time to give others an opportunity and to put my experience and talents to use from a different perspective. So uh, I don't have any goal other than to be elected and do the job. and. Hopefully folks will uh, work with me and we can get the job done, assuming I'm elected. And uh, what the future holds after that, I can't tell you, but I'm not the kind of person that jumps from job to job. And are you running in any of the primaries? Are you a Republican or Independent or what? Well, I consider myself an Independent Republican. I was recruited by the Vermont, uh, the Orleans County Northeast Kingdom Republican Committee 32 years ago. And it was not done because of ideology, it was done because they thought I had done a good job as a prosecutor in that county. And over the last 32 years, I've tried to uh, uh, follow the lead of some really important people in Vermont history who make Vermont what it is today. Frank Billings, George Aiken, Ernest Gibson, Bob Stafford, Jim Jeffords, 
all really a lot like I am. They were recruited by the Republicans at the time when they were young individuals. And then over the years, they developed their own identity and really went to work for Vermont. You put ideology aside. Very frankly, I'm embarrassed by what some Republicans at the national level have done. It's all about ideology. It's nothing about common sense solutions. If you talk to my colleagues, Jeanette White, Peter Galbraith, and others, Peter Shumlin, what they'll tell you is that in my 32 years in the Senate, I've always focused on the goal. What is the, what's the problem? What's the goal? How do we get there? Ideology is a footnote, if that. And how can people find out more about you and your campaign? I have a website, www.vinceforvermont.com, and I also have a Facebook page, facebook.com, Vince for Vermont. So I hope folks will look at it, if they like it, to like it. Comments are welcome. Uh, Daryl Pillsbury's been spending a lot of time with me, introducing me to uh, folks in the greater Brattleboro area, and uh, look forward to any input. Uh, obviously, if elected, it's going to be a collaborative effort between my office and uh, the folks with whom I have worked uh, over the years. All right, Vince Aluzzi, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Tim. but I served with Gordon and Daryl in the legislature. Right. It's, it's nice to visit New York, but it's nice to come home to Vermont. Well, my brother's a dentist in town, Frank Luzzi. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. On Western Ave. Hmm. Started yeah. out with Vermont Dental Care. For Is that right? We can all fit. Oh, wow, look at this. Uh, maybe we'll go we're in conference room. This is Bob Johnson. Bob Johnson, nice to meet you. Me too. Very famous guy. <laughs> Let's go in the conference room and gab a bit. Okay. Minute. Well, it's good to see you. Hey, Bob. We got a few video graphers with us and Olga from the Commons. Okay. You're most welcome. So over the years, the optics business has grown, and Bob does between 10 and 12 million a year, sort of depends on the year, employs anywhere from 80 to 120 people, again, depending on the year. Mm -hmm. And then some of the offshoots are sort of philosophical things that he likes. So this particular piece of property was a junkyard, literally thousands of junk cars, yeah. and he bought it with the idea of making it into a campus. Wow. which it's become. Yeah. So that's great. So Paul's Paul Pearson's old house is now the Inspire School for Autism Spectrum. Good. Hello. Vince Vince Luzzi, Luzzi, State Hello. Senator from the Kingdom. Hey, how are you? Opposite end of the state, running for state auditor. So I've heard. So you've heard. I don't know if that's good or bad, but nonetheless <laughs> I'm making a run for it. Well, good I'm, for a, you. I'm an RD, which uh, is uh, an anomaly somewhat in politics, but I think that in my 32 years work well with Jeanette White, Peter Galbraith, and the team down here. I work well with Peter Shumlin when he was in the Senate. So I'm hoping to at least uh, have a chance. I don't see why not. I think in Vermont, politics tends to be more about people than ideology. Well, I hope so. I know the guys in Washington are somewhat uh, on a different wavelength. Let's put it that way. Well, thanks for the time. My pleasure. Okay. Okay. Yes, my pleasure. Right over here. We'll follow you, young lady. Can we sneak up behind you, or are you on the phone, too? It's so many people have these near phones. Why don't you introduce you to Vince Senator Luther. Hi. Nice to see you. I live up in the Northeast Kingdom, State Senator. In vogue or trendy. So anyway, I hope you'll keep me in mind. Okay, yep, I will. My brother's a dentist in Brownville. Hey, Okay. I'm uh, Vince Luzzi, State Senator. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Sandy you. Sandy? Paul. Paul? 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 Paul
good to see you guys. Looks like you're doing some exciting work here. Oh, oh yes. yeah, always. I've been in the Senate for 32 years, and I'm in the state library. Hi. 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 Oh, hit me. Nah. Oh, 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 yeah. 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 All right. We don't want to bother you on the, on the hot plate there. Hi, Mr. State Senator. Oh, he hasn't taken a swing yet, so that's a good sign. Susie, State Senator. We're up in the Northeast Kingdom. Running for auditor. Okay. So you can vote for or against me as you choose. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, show of hands. Who's a Republican? Hi, guys. Yay! Well, I brought one. Must have looked hard and wide to find this group. Listen, I want to introduce you, though. I heard it. I want to introduce you to Senator Vince Aluzzi, who I was lucky enough to serve with for eight years up in the State House when I was a state, uh, when I represented Brattleboro in the House. He was on the Senate side and he represented the Northeast Kingdom. Okay, he is a Republican, but he's a very independent minded one, if good. I do say so myself. Very good. And uh, I wanted to bring him here because I wanted him to, to meet all you folks. And here he is, Senator Vince Aluzzi, who, by the way, is running for state. Oh, How you doing? So, uh, Vince Aluzzi, here's some of our fire yeah, guys, man. Well, we I love them. Mostly with the group. Yes. Here's here. the chief. Where? Right here. I'm <laughs> Vince Aluzzi. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. Uh, nice to meet all the folks down here. I've worked with you folks indirectly at the State House. Legislation that's helped all the firefighters, which uh, most firefighters certainly don't even know I was involved in you know, the, uh, the uh, smoke de the photoelectric smoke detector bill, the heart presumption bill, the cancer bill, all of that is, I think, a big plus for any volunteer or full-time firefighter. Thank you. Okay, it's good to see you yes. guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. No Republican can get, get elected in Wyndham County. But one thing I'll say about that, uh, I grew up in Montpelier and Barrie. Low, I've known Lola Aiken since I was a kid. And when I got into politics, she told me that George Aiken's success as a U.S. Senator was to work across party lines with the Democrats to get the job done. George Aiken would routinely have breakfast in Washington with Mike Mansfield, who was the Democratic leader. And it was that relationship, putting party labels aside, that enabled George Aiken to become the great U.S. Senator that he was for Vermont. And over the years, I've kept that admonition in mind. Just like Frank Billings, just like Ernest Gibson, just like George Aiken, just like Jim Jeffords, and just like Bob Stafford. You get elected, you then go and do your job aside from any party label. And that's what Lauren was alluding to. That's the way I've done business for 32 years, and that's the way I would continue to do business, elected a state auditor. So thank each and every one of you for coming.